For your own sake, forget everything you've seen on your... Oh, your life's not worth a dime. Yes. Can you say this, that in German for me, please? Uh, das und Hannah Woods. Oh, das Schreiner, oder der Hütung Ja! There you go. That's the... Was that really it? No, that was just me oh. saying <laughs> a little bit. What? <laughs> Sorry, I did. That would have been... Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, on, sorry yeah. if I upset anyone in Germany. <laughs> what I wanted was just the bit in World in a Wire, not a spoiler, where he just goes, Ja! Really, like, loudly. Oh, yeah, that yeah. That bit. In fact, I think we should just play that clip as the beginning. But anyway. Okay, I will um, do it, yeah. Yeah, anyway, that was my quote. Uh, it's a quote from World on a Wire, part one. Uh, and this is a science fiction rating system. Um, our job is to rate, rank, review films. Uh, we've got a huge list. We're nearly up to 100 episodes. Um, mm. And we've got 124 Four. films. Yes. I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm not on my own. Uh, I'm here with Chris Redding. Hello. And I'm here with Sam Draper. Hello. And my name's Alex Humphrey. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're here ranking, rating. And this is a bit of a different one because uh, this film, suggested by Colin, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Weirdly. Suggest- weirdly suggested by Colin. <laughs> uh, but also, I mean, it is fitting. A limited edition Blu-ray uh, came out from Second Sight in February, uh, which is a restoration of this film uh, with a 50-page booklet. So, uh, uh, and so, yeah, World on a Wire has kind of come back out now after, I think it wasn't available for a very long time. A long, long time. Yeah, yeah. 2010, yeah. they restored it and got it back like, yeah. visible again. Yeah. But um, it is, I mean, it's a bit of a cheat. This was on telly in two parts. So we're, we're kind of, we're, we're kind of reviewing it in two parts and then we'll rank it at the end. But it's, it's over yeah. three hours, isn't it? So that's why. I mean, the version I watched had credits halfway through. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's. Definitely two parts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so for those that uh, aren't aware of World on a Wire, it's the 1973 uh, science fiction film directed by Rainer Werner Fassbinder. Uh, and it was from a book, it's based on a book called Simulacrum 3, which was mm. uh, uh, published. It also publishes Counterfeit World, which is a bit more on the nose title. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a bit more like... You know, oh, that's what it's about, um, isn't it? I think Simulacrum 3 is a bit more sci-fi, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, 1964 book uh, by Daniel F. Galoi? Galoi? Yeah, I don't know, Galoi. Galoi. Uh, and it's one of the earliest literary descriptions of a simulated reality, which gives mm. you uh, an idea of what World on a Wire is about. Um, uh, should, we, should I do a synopsis or...? Do we do we need a synopsis? Do you think for World on a Wire? Um, I mean, there's not much story, is there? Really? No. Well, let's we'll go through it. Yeah, we'll just go through it, and I think everyone will pick up. Uh, will pick up. Uh, what's yeah. going on? So, part one, which I've called Mad Volma, uh, because <laughs> it's mainly about a character called Volma who goes mad. Um, it's quite that. that it's a very well. I thought it's a very well shot film. This film. <laughs> It's the it's locations well that make it, though, isn't it? Yes. It's like the, the rooms and the settings. Yeah. Amazing and the locations. Direction, the directions. The yeah. directions fantastic. Uh, I mean that that strange. That it's like a very odd opening shot, a kind of long distance of a kind of police barrier, isn't it? It's like a barrier mm. into the uh, into yeah. the um, into the offices of the uh, is it the VF? What are they called? It's a VFT, I think they're called. Uh, yes. The IKZ. IKZ, thank you. Yes, the IKZ, which have a weird. Did you notice their logo is like the Illuminati logo? It's a mm. triangle with an eye in it. Uh, yeah. For all you conspiracy theorists out there. Anyway, so it's the controlled entrance uh, to this institute, and uh, we kind of get in. They're having a big meeting uh, about Simulacron, which in Simulacron is the program. It's a government funded program to create a simulated world uh, to be used to kind of study things. It's 20 years in the future, isn't it? Yeah, like predicting trends 20 years in the future. Yeah, but the, but the kind of the big key issue that they kind of bring up at, at quite a few times is that it's government funded. It's not, it's not supposed to be anything to do with private, thing. private yeah. contractors or anything like that. And there's this kind of uh, meeting going on uh, with Professor Volmer who is the uh, kind of unhinged engineer of the world, isn't he? He's the kind of lead lead programmer, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he does this weird thing with all mirrors. He's kind of holding up mirrors on everyone. And 
It's a bit of an odd opening, isn't it? I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but a kind of a good opening because what sets up is he, he kind of, he starts talking to another character, which is, um, it's a uh, louse, the little mustachioed louse. Uh, and then he just walks out of the room, goes into the computer corridor, and then he's just lying on the floor dead. And we don't really know what's happened. Um, and the kind of the concept of a murder mystery, would you say? That's kind of quite a strong theme yeah. in this. Or yeah, a bit of a red herring maybe, but I don't know. It's definitely meant... The, the problem with this film is that because it is so old, the twist that becomes comes in the first part, you yes. kind of see after about 10 minutes. Yes. But yeah. if you didn't know that, I think you are meant to think it's a murder mystery film, aren't you? Yeah. In the first half until the, the like the twist at the end of the first yeah. half. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's quite similar to, I thought, quite off the bat, although I'm sure it references, like Dark City, in that that kind of has this yeah, kind of... Yeah. Uh, it's more obvious in that it's kind of a film noir, but... Um, it's kind of got this murder mystery, but then it's not really about that, you know? Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's very, very Lynchian. Like, mm. it's a, the whole thing felt, felt very David Lynch to me. Um, yeah. In the way, like a Lynch would, would put in, like, a you know, a, quite a simple sort of crime story, something like that, but it's not actually really about that. It's sort of more of a mood piece, isn't it? Or a, mm. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, definitely in, like, uh, I definitely agree with that when you move to part two, where they're in this uh, really weird, well, it's not a club, is it? It's actually uh, the house of Siskin, who is the, I think he's the head of the Institute. Uh, and there's like a cabin, didn't he, or something? Oh, it's really, it's a, a swimming pool inside. Mm -hmm. Then there's a kind of bar area. It looks like a club, like a really odd club. Yeah. Um, Ricky and yeah. And I have to say... That I agree with you here on this one, Sam. At this point, quite early on, I was like, oh, hold on a minute. If this is about a simulated world, this environment doesn't look like like a real house to me. Like This doesn't look like something from mm, reality yeah. to me. So already in my head, I was a bit like, oh, hold on. Is this a simulation? Um, I mean, maybe it's to do with the time period it was set in, do you think? Well, I think the the reason as well is that because all the characters who aren't talking are kind of very like passive and just stood around, mm. aren't they? Mm. Yeah. So like they're not even programmed to do anything. Mm. That's the thing well, that makes yeah. it feel even weirder. And then like because it's a straight away you kind of think, oh, something's not right. And then as soon as yeah. that guy vanishes, you you kind of know, oh right, he's in a mm. computer, there, thing, don't you? So there's also a kind of extremely, you know, and this is a good thing. The way women are treated in this film is mm. a little bit odd. And um, again, I kind of, there was a couple of moments where I was a bit like, oh, I don't think this is kind of, this doesn't seem like something that would happen in real life. The mm. way they're kind of like, there's a few times where women are kind of sent to him. Uh, yeah. To yeah. like, been like given to him as it were. Uh, anyway. Um, but at this point, anyway, we meet the main character uh, who is Fred Stiller. And he was Volmer's assistant and he's now been charged with taking over the project of Simulacron. Um, and yeah, he's at a party with uh, at Siskin's house, who has said is the kind of the main villain, should we say, with Siskin, isn't he? He's the main and the main kind of like yeah. antagonist, isn't he? Yeah. Um, and yes, as Sam mentioned, uh, Stiller sits down, has a big conversation with Laos, who we've seen earlier, but then suddenly turns and Laos is gone. Mm. And from this point on, no one knows who Laos is. No one has heard of him. No one saw him at the party. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And in fact, the job he did is being done by another person who's been doing it for years and whose house Fred Stiller went to and met his wife and stuff. So, yeah, as you mentioned, there's a, a kind of a weird, yeah, Lynchian kind of surrealist moment where you are already kind of questioning what's real and what's not real. And that's only mm -hmm. like probably 15 minutes into the film, really, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like like Chris said, there's some amazing sets. I would say that the sets are just I don't know. Was it filmed in? It's just I don't know if they were built, but it's kind of they're pretty epic sets. Well, they're not sets; they're locations, yeah, aren't they? The location because yeah. it's all ADR'd and folded as well. All the footsteps are weird. The sound yeah. of the the yeah. splashing in the water is weird because it's all yeah. just done in post in in a crap way. Mm. Um, yeah, I guess I can't help that. Yeah, it's, they're in like it's it's, it's like a post-war West Germany, isn't it? Yeah. So it's yeah. going to be like all those sort of cheap. Um, what's the word? Like, well, Mica. 
Yeah, there's a style, isn't to that, where you, know, you can only, you can imagine what the actual sound sounded like, can't you? Like, it would have been yeah, terrible, yeah, yeah. Like, either too muffled or, like, echoing yeah. everywhere. Yeah, um, plastic and formica and yeah. vineyard. But, it, but it, I, I think it looks, it suits, it especially looks because... Yeah, it, because it is so alien, and, like, it, it looks... And the way it's all shot and, like, his mm. use of... Um, all the glass partitions and stuff, do you know? It's mm. all that, like, mm. how many yeah. times someone talked from behind a glass partition. Yeah. Which, I mean, is an accident, happy accident of some of the sets, isn't it, that they were there? But the mm. fact he uses that so often, it feels so, I don't know, just real, I don't know. Coherent I like the camera moves, like, when someone walks into a scene. Yeah. Like, the camera just breaks frame and then just starts zooming into them. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's some that's, really good shots, I think. That's because of, do you know, Douglas Sirk? Oh yeah, no. Nope. Who's another filmmaker? Who this film is basically like a pastiche of his style, so all oh, the mirrored right. stuff and all that like smash zoom stuff. Yeah, it's all it's all, and I think I'm sure it's somewhere that it's you're meant to. It's meant to be over dramatic in the sense that he's sort of like mm. sending it up a little bit, oh, in a, but, in, okay. but not in a nasty way, like in a sort of reverent way. Hmm. Yeah, but I think that's cluing in as well to the fact that it's not real. That, yeah. that it's it's mm. obviously cinematic in those instances. You know, like mm. it's mm. not. Um, you know, yeah. someone coming through the room and talking, that smash cut in is but saying it like, to you, feels oh, yeah, like it's CCTV yeah. a little bit. Yeah, or, or like... Well, the camera's like film. on one of them joysticks and someone's like found a person and zooming in. Yeah, or someone sat outside of the world, aren't they? Yeah. Looking into the world and that's mm. the camera they're looking at the world through, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it does all... Like you say, it gives this, it a kind of a, a vibe of an older film, like, yeah, film noir kind of, the, yeah, the way people talk and the way they're kind of very poised and the way they kind of yeah they yes. enter just enter into places there's not really he doesn't really yeah. go and see people kind of thing people just seem to appear in these kind mm. of weird environments don't they yeah and the, and the brilliant like twist on that is the fact that like in a film while that would happen and then they'd go again wouldn't they but he just yeah. leaves them in the frame doesn't he like yeah quite often someone will come out and talk and then the, the conversation will carry on they're just in the background staring there's and some the amount like... of times he ends a scene with it going back to that person doesn't it and yeah just mm, staring stood there like yeah. just, <laughs> just doing nothing yeah. it's brilliant yeah. Uh, there's a lot of like well-known bits of music in this film, mm. Mm. and there's music all the way through, which was kind of annoying. Yeah, I didn't know what I thought about the music. Because if I in doubt, you know, you if the there. acting's shit and the scenes aren't quite working, just stick some music on it. You know, it, it was odd. It's it very was quiet though. A lot of it isn't it? It is a bit. It's always kind of. Con- it is Chris is right. It is in the background, kind of constantly. It was a bit odd sometimes. The music. Yeah. It's like they all listen to classical music all the time. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I mean, that sort of adds to it all, though. That well, I keep saying Kubrick, but it's like that yeah. feel mm. of that that architecture with that sort of music goes together so well, doesn't it? Like a brutalist mm. sense. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Uh, Stiller goes and visits plot wise. Stiller goes and visits uh, Volmer's daughter, Eva Volmer, and this this is again a bit like a kind of film noir thing. She's like the kind of a bit painted as a kind of femme fatale, femme like fatale, you know, yeah. yeah, I'm all my dad and all this. And and he, he, he there's a very he finds this very odd drawing, uh, which we then find out in the next scene, uh, according to Franz, who's the psychologist for the uh, he's a psychologist for the units, which are the simulated. Uh, people in the simulation, yeah. which is an odd job, mm. but it's, it's his job. Yeah. Uh, we find from out from him that it's a picture of Zeno's uh, Zeno's paradox, which is that yeah. um, Achilles tries to overtake a tortoise, but every time he gets near it, it's gone further forward, and it's supposed to represent that movement is an illusion, uh, mm. which again is a pretty heavy uh, pointer that something is up and something is uh, kind of going on um, in this world. And do you and think what's happening here is that the person who's trying to get him out has, has put that into the world yes. for him? Is that, mm. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah if we're kind it's of kind skipping of like, ahead, yeah. I think it's like the is, Oracle in the Matrix type thing, isn't it? Yes, definitely, yeah. 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 It's a clue. It's almost, I mean, in a weird way, it's almost like he's playing a computer game, and that's like a clue yeah. that's been placed in the game to kind of like yeah. tr- like trigger him. Pointing in the right direction, yeah. yeah. Talking of computer games, I've got a question for you. What is, this is not a quiz question, what is your favourite simulation computer game? Hmm. What do you mean, like a first Well, person? like, uh, no, like, kind of like uh, like The Sims, or, I mean, my favourite one was on the Mac a very long time ago, called Sim Cinema, and you could basically put any directors in, any actors, and you would kind of get a budget for your film. Like the movies. 
Yeah, and you would like it was very very old. The one I had was all text based, and you it would kind of like and it would kind of you'd release your film, and then it would say, "Oh, great yeah. opening weekend," and like it yeah, would yeah. alter. I think the... Me and Sam spent a full twenty four hours once on the on the <laughs> yeah. movies because yeah. it was raining. <laughs> yeah, we did. Was it, was Space Ape was that the film? Space had, Ape. It's some big, some massive films we made. Like, yeah, because yeah. you'd like put your own like voice samples and stuff. In, yeah. You? Oh wow, yeah. could you? Oh, that crazy. Made... Oh, yeah. Is there not? <laughs> that must have been. That was a more modern version, I guess. Yeah, it was called the Movies. It was by um, Bullfrog. It was like Populous and stuff like that. Oh. It was a PC game. It would well, have been about good. sort of two thousand five ish. It yeah. had quite a big scope for a game, actually. It was. Oh, it did. Yeah, yeah. Pretty mm. mental. Mm. Do you like build the sets and stuff, and you move the mm. actors around? You could like oh, wow. <laughs> do the voices yeah. and things. It's pretty yeah. cool. Mm. Um, my my favorite Sims probably The Sims. I really love The Sims. Really fantastic. Yeah, Big fan. you I get, like get weirdly like stuck in it. Mm. Um, I thought oh, you might yeah. say Sim City. I play the shit out of city games like Sim City. Yeah, yeah City um, Skylines. That's yeah, really that's good. The best. That's like oh, a, yeah, yeah okay. that's a fantastic game. Another one where you just like the whole day's gone without you realizing it. Big mm. time. I also used to really like Sim Tower. Do you remember that one? Oh no! You're making a massive tower and every floor's got different bits and stuff on it. Sim Towers are really good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 There you go. Just a question. Just a simulation question. I thought I'd throw in there. Um, back in the uh, back in uh, World on a Wire. We're getting kind of more. They're kind of fleshing out the kind of background of Volma, and uh, Fran says that Volma called the uh, the units his children, uh, mm. and they kind of make this good point that if you spent that long putting in programming uh, a computer to be a human, why yeah. wouldn't you then think of it as like your child? You yeah. know, mm. because Stiller is very much kind of like, oh, that's silly. I don't know why you would think that. But there's already, they're kind of, I mean, again, like the original Ghost in the Shell, they're kind of going down. There's some quite heavy duty discussions in this film about um, mm. humanity and consciousness and artificial intelligence. And uh, I mean, they're using what they've got. Like they've that. got great locations. Yeah. The German voice, when said in a softly spoken way, is really cool. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Even though they're talking technical stuff. Yeah. And, you know, they haven't got loads of, you know, computer... They no. haven't got access to a lot of CG or anything like mm. that or any effects, really. But they can have lots of people sat around having high fruiting yeah. chats. Yeah. Yeah. And I think because they've got this kind of murder mystery and this kind of uh, this kind of suspense element to mm. it, thriller element, it is still interesting. It's not just dry kind of, like, dialogue. There is still... He is still trying to... Still is still trying to work out discover the clues kind of thing. So these mm. big conversations, I felt they fitted in quite well. I mean, I don't know what you thought. Mm. Yeah, because they're not, they never gone too long and they're, they're written with a nice economy of sort of, mm. yeah. you know, they'll give you an idea and let you think about it, but they don't, they don't, there's not, it's, it's showing rather than telling. Yeah. Funny enough, as you're just talking about discovery, what well, that gets completely wrong is it's all telling, not showing. Mm. But this is just, uh, it, it puts the idea out, but doesn't really, do anything with it other than that because it doesn't, doesn't need to also you think about when it's made mm. and what like contemporary computers were then it's it's not really they're having these sorts of thoughts that early on mm. in the computers mm. you know yeah. life cycle isn't it it's pretty yeah. incredible that these uh yeah these even... concepts were around then you know yeah yeah no that's true yeah um there's a very strange scene next uh that with a really cool shot where from above we see stiller walking kind of on the street and there's a crane load of bricks following yeah. behind him. And you're like, oh, that's a cool shot. And he stops and asks the woman for a light and turns around and suddenly a load of bricks get dropped on her and kill her. Um, yeah. But all he does is kind of pick up the lighter <laughs> and then just yeah. walk off. And it, it doesn't really... I mean, I think you get the sense that someone's trying to kill him. Um, this, this is the only scene for me that I don't understand, really. No, I see... wonder what's going on. Because, because why doesn't he react? What it, What's... No. You know, he just doesn't make any sense, does it? I mean, no, it probably doesn't make sense point, eventually, hopefully. But They're still trying to... They're pushing the mystery still with the audience, right? If you don't know what this is or but what like, you're seeing. But you're right. Why doesn't he go, oh, my God, that woman's just been put, pounded by a load of but bricks? he might not even be human as far as we know, right? Well, yeah. Well, I just hope they pay it off, though. Like, I, I worry yeah. that it's not going to be explained. I hope they do pay off why he didn't mm. react, like yeah. what it is about his nature in the programme that made him not react to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it is a bit of an odd. Otherwise, it feels a bit random, random, doesn't it? Yeah, like, you know. yeah, no, it's a very odd moment. Um, there's also a kind of quite. A, there's the first like high tech device we see at this point, 
where we see Siskins using this video screen thing to di- dictate a letter to his secretary, which, yeah. I mean, it looks a bit clonky, but it doesn't, it doesn't look bad, does it? No. It's kind of a, it's an old fashioned understanding of, uh, of that. I mean, I don't really know why he, ultimately, why does his face need to be there to tell her? Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's not really much <laughs> better, is it? Like it doesn't. Because they're not looking at each other either, as well. Are they? No. Like, both just staring down at the desk while talking on the phone. It's strange. Yeah. yeah. No, it's kind of uh, yeah. But but know. also kind of like cool and, you know, on the whole like the things like the impersonal nature and stuff like that and like are you human stuff like that. The idea mm. that they are, mm. in different places linked by a screen both ignoring it it's quite an yeah. interesting sort of thing as, and again we like all like, the glass and stuff and the fact we're behind it all the time it's quite mm. a mm, well, it's yeah, a think, natural behaviour like around it. that technology I think like mm. I think it kind of sells it a bit better mm. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, we get also this is the bit where this is the first bit where I was kind of like mm, yeah the treatment of women in this is a bit odd uh, he's uh, still his assistant who he seemed to be having a relationship with I think uh, is yeah. ill and uh, has been replaced by Miss Frum, uh, who the the film repetitively. I mean, uh, I don't want to be rude. The film repetitively puts Miss Frum in the position of being like the most sexy, desirable woman that yeah. anyone has ever seen ever. And I don't yeah. mean to be rude to Miss Frum, <laughs> but she ain't all that, is she? I mean, it's, <laughs> well. <laughs> Is, is it, I'm not being, but it's an, do you, did you not find it odd that she is kind of repetitively put forward as being like, I don't know, maybe oh, I'm, on, I'm on dangerous ground here, aren't I, I guess, but... You are, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think Beauty's if the listeners... The eye of the holder, Alex. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's because the film <laughs> constantly puts her forward as being like, I don't know, like... She's 1970s like, Germany as well. Yeah. I, I mean, she's the, the, if you want to be less rude about it, she's the most overtly <laughs> dressed... She's like the most, sexually, yeah, I guess she? she's the most overt. So regardless of what you think about what she looks like, yeah, okay, it's clear that yeah. she's meant to be that character. Dressed to like a <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's, yeah. yeah, Sam, Sam's, okay, Sam's hit the nail on the head. She's the most, yes, exactly. She's the most uh, alluringly dressed of the characters. Anyway, I just found that really weird. But it's also quite weird that he then goes and visits uh, his assistant who is lying on a couch holding a creepy Victorian doll <laughs> And just goes on about having chronic exhaustion or something. With the weirdest makeup as well. Like she looks yeah. like a like a thirties vampire, doesn't she? Yeah, she's, she's got a, like putting this crazy red lipstick on. I mean, it's a really that's a really weird scene as well that you yeah. don't really know if that's going to get uh, paid out. You, but you know, like the the whole like role of the women in it and the way mm. they, they are kind of like carted in and out like that. Yeah, like it made me wonder whether that is like if he's not even aware that they're changing so much, like. Mm. If that's a manipulation Maybe. of the computer. Because you know how, like, when the, the widow of Volmer comes into it? Yeah. And he starts having dinner with her and stuff like that. And it's never really explained what their relationship is so much, is it? Oh, like, that, that's his, his, his daughter, you mean? Volmer's oh, daughter. It's his da- oh, sorry, it's his daughter, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But did he know before, or... I don't know. No, you don't it, it, know, you don't know, It's sort of not really you? explained what no. his relationship... Because he goes to all the houses, doesn't he, and stuff like that. Mm. And I don't know, it's just a strange thing... I mean, if, 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 you know, spoilers, if you are seeing this as a simulated world run by men, it does make more sense that the kind of the female units would just be kind of given to people. Or like, here's your assistant, yeah. mm-hmm. but also you can probably have sex with her as well. I mean, um, that's a problem you know, as well that we're watching like a film from the 70s, and as we seem to yeah. discuss all the time, yeah. how differently sexuality and like feminism well, is viewed then. Yeah, you the don't know how much of it's intentional, how much of it is just that's how films were made, well, isn't it? Like it's, yeah, exactly. I don't know if yeah. in, in those big businesses or in those government institutes in Germany at the time, your secretary probably was doing that as well. I don't know. Yeah, like, probably. Yeah, that's the thing, is it? Yeah. So then, but then you think, well, okay, so then is he making a comment on that? Because it, if mm. he's so clearly making mm. comments on yeah. Yeah, the film Then process, you're being so. racist. Against Germany, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. The other really interesting element that comes in at this point, which is extremely uh, kind of, uh, you know, they've they've totally hit the nail of where we are now. Uh, at this point, Stiller goes to see Siskin, and uh, Hartman, the chairman of United Steel, is there as well. And mm. this is basically the first time that they introduce the idea that uh, a company, so it's a, a, a government, you know, run. Is, uh, yeah. simulation but a company is getting involved to basically work out how much steel that they would sell and all that and this idea I mean it's just like this is something I mean then it might have been kind of mind blowing but to us now this is so like this just happens all the time doesn't it that 
you know, Facebook, Google, all these things are com- their pa- companies are paying them to mm. track us, to sell us stuff, you know, to tailor adverts to us. It's it's so commonplace now that again, I think it's that's a very like West German post-war concern, isn't it? If you think mm. of like you've got communism on the other side of the wall, yeah, and so there's mm. got to be conversations about. Is, can, is capitalism the right yeah. way to go? And this yeah. is like the, the absolute worst thing about the capitalism, isn't it, in a way? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of exploring that an interesting sort of... Yeah, like, I bet it was very much on their, on their mind, wasn't it, at the yeah. time? You know? Yeah, it's just funny that they're kind of... I, I mean, I'm sure that these types of simulations exist, as it were, or simulations that are trying oh, yeah, to massively. use it. Mm, and yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure as well that people like United Steel are just like, yeah, cool, we'll have a part of that and we'll... You know, like yeah. so. This is probably just happening now, and the fact that it's oh, kind yeah, of totally. this is There's kind also of like machine learning and stuff used now, though, isn't there? Yeah, an mm. algorithmic. Yeah, um, probably going more towards the automated side of things, where we are run, run by computers rather than. I mean, that's essentially how Facebook and Google make money, isn't it? By yeah. running algorithms against data they get and selling it to people. That's their yeah. whole yeah. business, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's uh, an I think... algorithm would be the head of a steel. It's not a steel company man anymore. It's the algorithm which dictates what's going it. on. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess the the problem that we have is that we're almost a bit too used used to this now. That we're almost un. It's so much part of our lives. We're really not well, no, even aware prob- of it. Yeah, that's that, that's the problem. Or the mm. the solution was basically to, you know, obf- obfuscate it so much that it doesn't. Like if you wanted to find out about it, where would you start? You couldn't. You no. would know, wouldn't know where to to do to deal with it. You know, and there's no. It's so ingrained. It's just yeah. the way things work, isn't it? Yeah. Or if it's you wanted to change really. it, yeah. If you wanted to change it, you know, you keep seeing adverts for uh, the science fiction rating system all the time, and you didn't want to see them. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't want to see them, but you know, you would. It's so hard to change once an algorithm is is set into whatever search engine or whatever you're using. It's so hard to go against that, isn't it? Well, that's that's the whole problem with like this. You know the far right, isn't it, and stuff at the minute, and mm. that Christchurch thing is that like, if you look up a far right video, you're only suggested far right videos, aren't you? So mm. your worldview becomes mm. just that, and that's yep. the, that's the real danger with it. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Mm. So Fassbinder was was kind of on the money with this. He was predicting quite a lot of stuff that uh, you know that we're kind of dealing with now. I guess it's pretty uh, yeah. Because if you advanced. wanted to like. If you had this, you had multiple ones, you'd set one up and you'd go, okay, for this mm. one, we're going to just feed them this particular sort of news story, see what happens, mm, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. And, and you make your own have, resonating you... chamber. So you're like, if you're yeah. into Flat Earth on YouTube, yeah. yeah, and you get, that's all you get. It is yeah. like, it is a constructed world for you. Like, yeah. it's just, it's li- it's literally the same. Yeah. Yeah. That leads me to my next question. If you were going to make a simulation of something, uh, what would you make a simulation of? To, to, I guess let's let's frame it in a sense to help you in your in your life, as it were. Uh, so, I, like you know, they're making a simulation to like see what the trends of steel will be, so they can yeah, sell mo- steel. model the stock exchange. Yeah, would you do that though? Is it that would you do that something like that, or would you not do something more fun? Like I don't know. Well, if you want, you'd be rich fast, wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess you. I guess that's the most practical. Yeah, but everyone like, does it. Yeah. It's like it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. You don't think it would work? Well, if everyone had access to it, whatever advantage you get wouldn't mm, yeah, would point. be nullified. Not, well, if everyone's got it, yeah. But I thought just I was getting it. <laughs> no, yeah, it's just for you. You're just you're the one making it. It's just like for the you. almanac in Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, to have a holodeck would be pretty good. Like where you could just simulate could time, do periods. like trial runs of things before you do mm. do them. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Don't you think that'll happen in our lifetime though? Like we. Were, yeah, it, that will be a thing, wouldn't it? They're getting there. Like VR is pretty incredible already. I think. Mm. Yeah. No, they are getting. Yeah, I think they are getting time. nearer. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got to uh, part four into the machine, uh, and this is where they kind of. They, this is the first time we get nearer to when you actually see what uh, Simulacron is. Um, they say that there are nine thousand seven hundred units uh, in Simulacron. <laughs> And they mm. kind of go to a bit where there's some people hooked up and there's a woman and he goes, oh, she's in the mind of a millionaire's wife. Uh, you don't really know why she's in the mind of a millionaire's wife. but um, mm. Well, because that would be is. the best mind to be in yeah. if you're a woman, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can't be a millionaire yourself. you're writing yourself. a TV show. Yeah. It, it um, is weird, though, because they kind of not really... It's as though like it's a commercial thing, isn't it, where you go in and experience another life, whereas yeah. they're not really... 
mention that at all, have they? Otherwise, no, yeah, why they? is that person doing that? Is it just, yeah. a, is she just a tester or, yeah, they yeah. don't explain that. Uh, but basically the setup is that you have these kind of couches and then you wear this very kind of Russian cosmonaut kind of helmet, which has got wires awesome. out of it, which is pretty cool. And then there's just this bank of TVs where they can watch, it looked like they could watch what you're doing, don't mm. can't they? Um, and, have you guys uh, seen Maniac? The oh, oh no, not the TV no. series, no, no, no. Is it good? Okay. Yes, similar, similar oh, shit going okay. on. Oh right, oh, okay. But in a, a more stylized, modern way of doing it. Oh, but yeah. Okay. Um. So, Stiller, Stiller gets interviewed by the police again, even though he's already talked to the police. Uh, and they kind of imply that he's a suspect in Volmer's death, but, you know, whatever. But uh, he wants to go into the machine, so he, he hooks himself up to go into into a truck driver, and then it's quite cool because you just kind of get this POV of in a truck kind of thing, uh, yeah. which is quite a cool little moment. But then, yeah. then you get these weird messages flashing on the screen, don't you? Yeah, what was that? Well, you see, know what it said it. No, mine wasn't translated, <laughs> so no, I didn't. Mine. No, no, was yours, Chris? No, no. Right. So, so for those out there playing along, uh, there are these three or four words are just flashing at you on the screen, or uh, and it, I can't remember what they are, but they're not translated in the subtitles. And then he kind of comes out. Next thing you see, he's face down on the doctor's table, and it's implied that there's a bomb had gone off inside yeah. the machine. Mm. and basically nearly killed him so i guess at this point you're like is this a second kind of murder attempt on him or was it they basically say don't they that it has to be sabotage because there is no way the machine could go that wrong so someone yeah. must mm. have done it but is this like um but everyone denies it don't they Everyone's yeah like, no no but like you said sam is this like the kind of achilles thing is this another message sent by someone yeah. to tell him that he's nice, in... tell, isn't it in the machine, yeah, we're not really mm. sure at this stage. I love this we? scene afterwards in the doctors. I loved the doctor's performance. It's brilliant yeah. when he's yeah. when he waits at the door and looks back and goes, "You'll be right now." And they yeah. just like, stare just, just stare at him and he wanders out. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you fancy this is like really in vogue as far as that uh, Black Mirror as well, right? Mm. It, like this mm. this whole theme and style. Yeah. Like, it's because it, it's coming true, isn't it? So it's on everyone's mind. Like it, is, mm. it is coming to fruition. Yeah. So I suppose that's why it's so... I mean, it's uh, interesting to watch something this old that is, you know, basically the forefather to kind of The Matrix, Dark City. Yeah, yeah. anything about this kind of... This is really where, you know, unless there's someone can tell us an older version, this is pretty much like the base, the first version that we've seen of these ideas. Uh, mm. Definitely. Uh, do you want a quiz? Yes. Okay, so... Uh, this quiz again I hope I don't offend any German people uh, how ugly are Germans uh, it's, <laughs> these are I'm going to give you German titles to famous films uh, mm. now none of these films are sci-fi uh, right. they are all films you should have heard of and I will give you so I'll give it to you uh, well I won't try the German I'll give you the English translation and oh, t- no, go on, try the German. Okay, I'll try the German, I'll give you the English translation, and I can tell you the genre if you want, because, you know, we are talking about a lot of films okay. here. Is that all right? Cool. Yeah. So, all right, here we go. So the first one, uh, Sam. Bis mm-hmm. zum Morgadorion. Uh, that's called Bite Till Dawn, and it's a, yeah. uh, let's say, a teen horror film. Um, Twilight? Yes, well done, yeah, okay. Okay, Chris. Uh, Vol auf die Nuss, which is is called, which is straight in the balls, and that <laughs> uh, and that is a comedy, an American comedy. Um, one of the American words voice. is is the word in is is in the title. Right. Um, if that helps. What was it again? Straight in the balls. Straight in the balls. <laughs> yeah. Um, space balls. Uh, dodgeball. Near. Dodgeball. Uh, yeah, dodgeball. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, right, Sam. Ich glub mit tritt ein Puff Pferd. Sorry. Uh, and it's that is, I believe, a horse kicked me. Uh, and this is an American comedy. I believe a horse kicked me. Yeah, this is really hard. You're not going to get this. Uh, <laughs> I believe a horse kicked me. Uh, Dom and Dumber. Uh, Animal House. Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. Weird. <laughs> yeah, really weird. Uh, okay, so Chris. Zwei Glorich Halukun, which is called which is Two Glorious Scoundrels, and it's a Western. And let me just say the two is extremely misleading. <laughs> um if that Magnificent helps you out. Seven? No, but yeah, but yeah, I can see why you said that. The good, the bad and the ugly. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, I guess it would be there are two scoundrels in it though. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's but like they've taken one, one of... element of like a scene or yeah. <laughs> a part of the film and they've just called the film after that. Yeah. 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 Uh okay, uh, Sam. Wein die gondolin trauer tragen. Uh when the gondolas were mourning, and that's a uh, horror film. Oh it... In a horror Venice? film, yeah, set in Venice, yeah. Don't look now? Yes! Oh, well done. Okay, Chris. Streeb Langsum, which is Die Slowly, and that's a action film. Hmm. Die Maybe sl- don't overthink this one. <laughs> <laughs> don't overthink it. Don't. One of the words is the word in the title. <laughs> die Hard? Yes, it is Die Hard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, um, uh, Sam. Dai ungeblich reis ein Eimen vertecken flazug. The unbelievable journey in a crazy plane. And this is a comedy. Airplane. Yes. Yeah. That's a better title, that is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so they're being very literal. That one's very <laughs> literal, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Very so German. Chris, the Wave Howl, and that's the White Shark, and it's a horror film. <laughs> This is Sam's um, favourite film. Let me let me think. Yeah. <laughs> um, deep blue. No, I mean Jaws. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's not. He is. A, is he white? He's not a white shark, is he? Great white yeah. shark. No, he's white a shark, great yeah. white. Okay, they've really. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, Sam Ein Zwigen Comet Selten Alien. A twin rarely comes alone, and that's a children's <laughs> comedy. Uh, all right. Okay. Um. Uh, her twins? No, the parent trap. Oh, oh yeah. God. Uh, das Grub Klaben, the great, <laughs> the great crawling, uh, and that's a kids film, Chris. It's an animated kids film. I was the Bugs Life. Movie, but... a bug's yes, life. a Bugs Life. Yeah. Yes, yeah. well done. Oh, you've just got. Oh no, it's, it's uh, even Stevens. Right, uh, Die Ritter der Kokosnuss. The Knights of the Coconut, and that's a British comedy. Uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yes. Okay, and the last one, uh, which we should have given, it should be for Sam, but maybe that make it too easy, Chris. Die Stander Neurotica, the City Neurotic, and that's a, a comedy drama by someone Sam really likes. Used to. Used to really like, doesn't like him anymore. Can't defend him anymore, can you really? No, you can't defend him anymore. What do you reckon? Is he gone? Um, oh, I'm thinking. <laughs> um, Manhattan? Ah, oh, Annie Hall. Very near. Very near. It could have been any of them, really, couldn't it? It could, yeah. Yeah. So Sam just wins by one. Well done, Sam. Yeah. Thanks. There you go. I mean, Danka. 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 Uh, anyway. S is I- good. S is fantastic. Ah. Yeah. Uh, back in the uh, back in the uh, in the film, uh, this is uh, Stiller wants to talk to Einstein. Uh, now Einstein, don't we all? Well, yeah. Uh, Einstein is the is unit zero 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 one, and he is the <coughs> u- the only unit in Simulacrum that is aware that he he is a simulation. Yeah. I guess. Uh, I love and, this idea. It's brilliant. And they had to build him because. It's the only way the world would work because I guess he gives feedback to what's going on when because yeah. they can't be watching everyone. So somehow he knows everything that's going on, I guess, because it's like a small town. They so totally he... ripped this off the Matrix, by the way. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, so they have to talk to, uh, they have to, talk to him. Uh, so um, And what they hear, why they have to talk to him, is because uh, one of the units called Christopher Nobody... Uh, Chris, Christopher Nobody um, has uh, has tried to kill himself uh, and they've just taken him out of the system because that's dangerous now there's a very stupid this is probably the stupidest bit in the film Stiller sits down and he writes down Christopher Nobody 
And then he writes N-O, and then he writes yeah. C-E for some reason. Yeah. And then he goes, Zeno, Zeno's yeah. Paradox, like that. And you're like, nah, come on, now that is a bit... It doesn't work. That doesn't work, because <laughs> where are you getting the E from? And also yeah. it's Zeno, not Zeno. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this bit is probably the bit that most people... I would say if anyone watches this film that didn't know about it, their mind would be a little bit blown. Because uh, the way Stiller, uh, he, Stiller is projected into Sybil Arquin, and the way he's projected into the hotel, he comes in, well, basically he gets out through the phone, doesn't he? Mm. Yeah. Which is literally the Matrix. That's the Matrix, exactly... Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think is the relevance of the guy, the fat guy in the makeup? I don't know. This, that something was going on there, wasn't it? Do you think, do you think that's his secretary? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, because like he is has... Is that significance in the makeup? Well, yeah. I don't know, because he... So he has, they, have the com- they have the conversation and uh, uh, they have a conversation. Einstein basically is goes a bit crazy and says he wants to get out and all this stuff. And then the way they signal that he needs to come out because you're only allowed mm. in there for a certain time is to have a little thing say, get, there's a phone yeah. call for you. But yeah, you, like you say, there's this fat guy who's blocking the phone and won't let him get in. Mm. Is and it, also at the start of that scene, he goes in the one phone and he switches to the other phone, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, he follows him down, again, and he's like got really red lips, hasn't he? Which yeah, he's old, uh, as you said, like before. Yeah. She was putting red lips to come on she on on, on mm. a sofa. And she was very old pale. receptionist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it it could be someone trying to kill him again to keep him in the machine, or it's definitely yeah, something, isn't it? It's definitely Something's something going on. Yeah. Yeah, and also, as he leaves, he just as he's about to leave, he sees Laos uh, within Simulacron. So Gunther, Gunther Laos is definitely real, but he's not real in their world. He's real mm. in the mm. other world. Yeah. And when they look up uh, the unit, they find that there's a unit called Gunther Lauser that was programmed by Volma. So it's all kind of like, kind of this bit is kind of slowly coming together, isn't it? Um, yeah. Um. So the next part, we kind of get this weird. Uh, he's in his car, uh, and this this someone going talking about the daily news mystery surrounding supercomputer. Uh, so you kind of get the idea that the the media is kind of going crazy, and that's when someone just randomly gets in his car and says the quote I said at the beginning, which is for your own sake, forget everything you've seen. Uh, now I read this as this could either be a threat or it could be that he's saying you need to be careful. Hmm. Don't you think? Because he's kind of saying, he's either threatening him, saying, leave it, or he's saying, be careful because you could just die. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it. it's hard. I, I don't know if it, and I, I worry it's not going to be resolved either. Yeah. Like, if he's in, if he's in there and someone's trying to get him out, mm. right, it doesn't make sense him to say that because he, they want him to get out. Yeah. And if, if he's in there and that's someone threatening him, well, mm. why do they need to? Because they've already gotten trapped in there anyway. So yeah. it's sort of, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I did the next scene I thought was really good. So he goes and sees Franz again, who, as we remember, is a psychologist. And it's all this whole scene is in Franz's house. And he's got these big fish tanks. Mm. Um, and it's where kind of Stiller basically kind of lays out what's happened to him. So, you know, he's been, someone's tried to kill him. Uh, he's had a policeman interrogate him twice for the same thing, even though he says he doesn't remember it. Uh, he's getting these crazy headaches. He's had mm. a, a moment when he was driving a car where everything went black. Um, mm. So. And, and interestingly, Franz just kind of says, oh, just relax, you know, just get over it. Like, you'll be all right. Just go and yeah. get a bit pissed. Um, but what he does say as well, which is interesting, is he says that the work they do is that basically Stiller and Volmer before him were basically God because they created these people. They could, like, destroy them without even, you know, with the press of a button and yeah. you could make them, you could mould them, you could do anything you wanted. And it is true that if you had that power, you would probably go a bit mad. Because especially if if you're not talking about just a computer thing with like numbers, if you're talking about something that looks like a real world, you are yeah. kind of messing with real people. Yeah. Mm. Uh, which is another kind of heavy idea, but it's kind of an interesting uh, heavy idea. Especially as you can actually go in there and interact with them as people yourself. Mm, yeah, exactly. Like it's not like playing The Sims because no, it's playing The Sims, but you actually can be a sim as well. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we kind of, he leaves and uh, Gloria's there, the uh, Miss From, uh, who's very attractive. 
Uh, and then they go to this really <laughs> weird. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm backtracking. Uh, they go to this very weird club where there is bes- these black guys with no tops on, and these women with no tops on, and everyone's yeah. kind of dancing, and he gets really crazy drunk. But the music in there is really—it's like kind of sad Spanish guitar. It's so strange. But everyone's see, yeah. like kind of grinding and like you know, and he's, <laughs> it's really odd. And, he, and again, and, you think like, is this just what the club scene was like in yeah. 70s Germany? Oh <laughs> is yeah, it weird like, or was it just, cause it could be, couldn't it? Yeah, no, it could have been. No, I've got no, <laughs> yeah, no, I really couldn't work it out. And then he starts yelling that he's not going to be manipulated and he's not going to be, he's not going to let private interests take over the computer. Um, yeah, and it's kind of an odd scene. But I think, I think for me, for me, I got that you're supposed to think he's kind of, he's kind of just given up, giving a shit a bit, don't you think? Mm. Yeah. He's kind of about, he's kind of getting out a bit out of control at this point, wouldn't you say? Well, I think it is because he's he, he's trying to not let on that he's unraveling the mystery, is he? In mm. his waking life, yeah. And he's on his normal life, so he's got drunk and kind of forgotten that, and be like, oh yeah, mm. fuck it, I don't, I can't work it out. It's too strange, and and she's like chaperoning him, isn't she? So, yeah, um, yeah, it, it, yeah. It's odd. Yeah. Um, my question to you is: is next question is this? Do you think we are living in a simulation? Uh, I don't know. I could believe it. Yeah, could you believe it? Do you think it could yeah. be possible? But define simulation. Well, like it's like the Matrix. Like all of us are just plugged no. into big. Com- no, okay, good. That's fine. Uh, Not I, like the I, Matrix. I think that is more likely than the aliens out there. To be honest. Okay. More interesting. Chris, it could be aliens, and we're in the simulation of the aliens. Well, that's what I mean, yeah. Like, I, the, but the idea is something else in this universe. Mm. I could believe more readily that we are just on a petri dish in a, in a lab somewhere, yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Uh, There's my... only like one extra step of like, if you imagine like everything it took to make us, mm. it's one, literally one small extra step to say there was an intelligence a bit earlier mm. that made us and a simulation. Yeah, it's 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 not an extra. It's considering all the steps previously mm. to have one extra, which we can't think of, mm. is considered. It's a limitation of our brains, isn't it? Though, really, yeah, yeah, that we need to have a step before because mm. there probably isn't a step that we could ever interpret, isn't there? That's probably mm. the actual truth. Is we just couldn't understand. Yeah. No. Um, the the second bit of that is if if there was a simulation but like mm. like available so imagine this whole the world of world on a wire in 1970s germany was a simulation yeah. you could go in would you want to go yeah. in it can i come back out again um mm, uh, can you come back out again no can i choose who i was yeah you can be anyone you want uh yeah you can be anyone you want and you've got infinite, you know, like if you want to be in the millionaire's wife, you could be a millionaire's wife kind of thing. Uh, but you're not allowed back out again, no. Can anyone else come with me? Uh, yeah, I guess. Well, I've got a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah they can. Yeah, I'm yeah. totally going in then. Yeah, yeah. 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 Chris, yeah. would you go in? No. No? No. Oh. You'd stay out in the real world. I'd, yeah, I mean, that's a classic uh, philosophical question though, isn't it? Like, if you could have a perfect life, but it's not real, mm. no, most people wouldn't choose it, would they? I totally would. <sighs> would you? If you're unaware yeah. that, if you're very unaware, it's like what is real, right? Because yeah, exactly. You, you're trapped in your own mind anyway, right? Well, yeah. I wouldn't care if I was aware that it wasn't real, though. Like, oh, who, okay. who cares if it's if it is if it appears real? Mm. That's enough for me. So you're basically like, uh, what's it in the Matrix? The uh, yeah, little, totally. The Star yeah. Show guy. No, well, he wanted his mind wiped, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. doesn't want to know. No, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you, you wouldn't have that like small print. You go, just make me. Do, yeah, because famous to be honest, and rich. No, because yeah. to be honest, because you'd actually, you'd because the fact is, the world of the Matrix outside the Matrix is pretty terrible. So yeah. if you remember yeah. that, you're going to stay in the Matrix. Yeah, I mean, he he's better, the you? choice isn't is different there. Yeah, the choice is very different there. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're into the kind of final bits of part one of World on a Wire. Now, this is it does go quite quite matrixy here. I feel uh, uh, World on a Wire because basically it's this great scene where Stiller goes to see Siskin, and Siskin's like, "Oh, hey, um, 
if we were going to, could you just explain the whole of Simulacrum <laughs> to someone who knew nothing about it? And he's like, yeah, I could do that. And he went, oh, cool. I thought you'd say that. And then the doors open and a whole huge load of press come in. And he basically on the hoof has to make a press statement uh, about what it is. Because, I mean, I think I assume at this point the press are getting out of control and the kind yeah. of rumour mills are too much. So Siskin wants to gain control. So what you get is basically just huge, probably three long paragraphs of Stiller explaining exactly mm, yeah. what Simulacron is, which, yeah. you know, is interesting. They did, they did this in Matrix 2, I think. Yes, it really, remind, yeah. it really reminded <laughs> yes. me of the second Matrix, actually. Yeah. Uh, it really did. The um, Merovingian. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, I've kind of said most of it already, but basically there are 9,000 units. They all have memory, imagination, exactly like humans. Uh, it's a tiny universe, exactly the same as their universe, but it's 20 years in the future. Uh, everything is the same and they can replicate they can add tiny little um, changes and, it, and they mm. kind of they tweak the environment don't they to see they, so they can learn consumer habits housing needs uh, evolve the transport and that's kind of the the government side of it that they want yeah. to basically predict uh, how how the I guess they're in a city I guess it's just, it's supposed to be like Berlin or something or do we assume mm-hmm so they just want mm. to see, like, okay, would we need more housing? Would we need more mm. transport links? Is that going to affect it? What if everything was nuclear? What if everything was green? You know. Uh, it doesn't make sense in the sense that you, you can't really try something and reset it, right? Well, I couldn't see how they could, but they seem because to say they that could. Because be, that would be a really useful tool if you could try something and reset it, and that would truly give you a, 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 mm. a true test. Of something they must be able to though else it's a bit if else it's a bit pointless isn't but it? but they don't want people's minds though do they i don't know they don't explain that do they they don't really explain it do they i mean if you think that they're already by the end of it we know we're like another layer deeper than we thought then there could be loads of these things going on couldn't they like you say yeah like, could be i really guess it's only nine thousand people yeah yeah each uh, um yeah they kind of do this in like facebook with like banners don't they because they yeah if they make a banner, they put it out like a hundred versions of it with slightly different font and yeah, yeah. pixel moved here, pixel moved there. So they kind of test on the population yeah. and then the most clicked on one gets used. Mm. Yeah. yeah, Netflix do it as well. They change the, the picture they show you. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's so, awful uh, though. Like, And uh, that's I, depending on your and who you are and what well, you are as well. Because I've noticed it, my sister's one is completely like femalized. Yeah, Femalized exactly. Versions. And also, I've read an article that says if Netflix thinks you might not be a white person, it mm, completely yeah. changes what you see yeah. by even to the point well. of putting characters in the picture that are minor characters, so misleading you to think. So basically, the, the example it uses is in um, Love Actually, uh, mm. Cheatway, that guy, him. The Tiffle, yeah. Yeah, him and, uh, it's him and um, Kira Knight. They are the yeah. picture for Love Actually. Now, they're pretty yeah. low down in the character list. But if yeah. you were looking at yeah. that, you'd be like, oh, cool, it's a yeah. film about them as a Ooh. couple. Oh, okay. And then you're like, oh, hold on, this is nothing like that. So, yeah, mm. Netflix is, uh, yeah, big on big on that. Um, it's at this now, point... I mean, if, if that's not social engineering, well, I don't know what is. Yeah. Like, in using technology. Yeah. No, we are we are in the world on a wire. We're on a wire. Um, we are on the wire, yeah. yeah. Um. It's also the bit it, it, this it comes back up about United Steel and uh, the the kind of reporters the particular it's Rupp isn't it is the kind of reporter that we've we've met before uh, he yeah. kind of pushes Siskins on the fact mm. that they the kind of United Steel are in bed with this uh, with this with the IKs there or whatever they're called and they they've got a lot of interest in it but he kind of brushes it off um, and then we go to the end of the film. Uh, which luckily there is an extra bit, which is the kind of the big twist of the film, which we've kind of spoiled. But um, uh, Stiller goes out with Eva uh, and they have dinner and he's kind of a bit, uh, he's a bit weird with her. It's a bit of a weird scene, isn't it? But um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of odd. Then he takes her home and then for some reason he decides to go in her house after her, but he walks around. There's an amazing shot that tracks around the entire apartment Brilliant. in one mm. shot it looks really cool yeah. she's got a bloody swimming pool as well hasn't she um, it makes you wonder though what is that like wh- what does that house look like it's as there's no like central walls to it, no. the way that shot works because it no. goes around every single room doesn't it back to the front room yeah but he goes around the whole house she's not there he freaks out gets drunk talks to some random guy who never speaks back so i don't know if that guy <laughs> is even there 
Um, yeah. He goes to his office, still drunk, and in his kind of tuxedo, doesn't he? Um, it's brilliant when he's getting dressed. That seems <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they get into... They go. He goes to these diskins and they spin around in their chairs, which is a thing mm. that like yeah. <laughs> Stiller seems to do throughout the whole film, is just get in a yeah, re- yeah. revolving chair and spin around. Anyway, yeah, and it. then uh, Mark Holm comes in. Uh, and Mark Holm used to work for is works for a subsidiary of United Steel. Uh, Steel, so that Siskin basically hiring people from the outside contractors. Anyway, uh, Siskins is a bit uh, still is a bit mucked up. He rings Eva, but she answers her phone and says something really vague, like "Oh, I was lying on the couch. You just didn't see me." Yeah, which is really confusing. Then she says she loves him. Uh, uh, anyway, and then the final scene. Uh, he goes to the cafe to basically get drunk. Um, he starts drinking and sees Fritz, who's one of the programmers, I think, Fritz is. Yeah. Uh, Fritz says he's going to go and talk to Einstein. And then you see time pass because he's got like about five bottles in front of him. But when Fritz comes out, Stiller says, you're not Fritz, you're Einstein. And he grabs him and they tussle. And Einstein mm. says, I'm, what does he say? I'll tell you what he says. He says... Uh, let me go don't send me back it's my only chance I want to be a human being and I will this is the mm. first step I'll make the next one too into the real world and Stella mm. says but this is the real world and Einstein says no ha 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 that's what you think you're just a simulation <laughs> a really good one but you're a simulation a simulation and ha 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 Professor Volman knew it and that's that and then he kind of blacks out and that's the end of part one so it's a good mm. uh, it's a pretty good um, I mean we all saw it coming but it was a it was a it's quite well realised, I thought. I didn't see Einstein getting out of coming, though. No, me neither. The, the idea that you've kind of got to go up through the ranks of the, of yeah. the, of the simulation. I, I, how do you think, why do you think he knows that's Einstein? I don't know. Mm. He just does, doesn't he? Is it because yeah, of how Einstein... No, I don't know. No, I don't know how he knows, but he does. Um, the only other thing I was going to... Like, a bit of trivia is that, do you know this, was, this book was, uh, has been made uh, into another film? Yeah, I did. Yeah. The Thirteenth Floor, yeah, which yeah. was uh, uh, produced by Roland Emmerich. Uh, so, and it was made in nineteen ninety nine. So we could technically we could watch it. So we probably should yeah. give it a. Uh, it was nominated for a Saturn Award for best science fiction film, but it lost to The Matrix, ironically. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's the end of World on a Wire. We're not allowed to rank it. Uh, but what did we all think of it in general? Did we enjoy World on a Wire, Chris? It was a visual delight. Mm. I liked, I just liked, I liked the tone of it. I found the music annoying. I'm a bit with you on that. I found the close of music, music a bit. I yeah. like how they've attempted something quite, because obviously, what was it, German TV or something this yeah. was made for? I don't know. But it's like, they've attempted something like quite high level. Mm. And even though they technically fall down in a lot of ways, like, because you do see... These long shots are very nice, but you've seen the fucking crew in like the windows and the and the mirrors all the time, mm. um, you know. But it, you know, it, it covers some interesting ground thematically. Yeah, uh, it's difficult given that we're a post Matrix audience, so aren't, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the fact is it's quite like like we all said. I think all of us early on were kind of like, oh, hold on a minute, um, because to us this is a quite a common uh, trope now. The idea mm. that you're in a you're in a game or you're in a in a simulation mm. or you're you know whatever under hypnosis mm. or in a dream. Um, so yeah, I think sadly for us that is spoiled. Well, I'm hoping for you know there's a twist in this which we don't see coming. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, see, I think it will kind of live or die on the second part because they've built quite mm. a good framework. But like you said, mm. Sam, it kind of has to deliver, doesn't it, the second part? Mm, it doesn't have to. You don't. Like, some of the questions that is put forward in this, don't you think it needs to kind of... It, I don't know. Like, this is very much... just This is my kind of shit. Like, I absolutely loved it. Good. Because of how it looks and how it moves mm. and the shots and how slow it is and things like that. Like, mm. it's just... I absolutely mm. loved it, mm. and I think, like initially, I thought oh, that's annoying how we have another twist. But then mm. it kind of frees you up to watch it without trying to second guess it or work it out in a way mm. that I, as we've gone through it now, my, my mind's thinking, oh, what's this? What's that? And trying to, yeah. And, and as I say, like getting worried that they aren't going to tie up all the loose ends. But then I think, well, like Twin Peaks didn't tie everything up. That's brilliant, no, you know. True. Mulholland Drive 
well, actually, Mulholland Drive kind of does, but only when you know what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, like things like that, Lynch stuff doesn't need to be all tied up. So, yeah. and I, I'm kind of prepared. I kind of think it won't. Like I kind of think it can't in a way mm. <laughs> tie up satisfactorily. But that doesn't matter because it is such a visual treat, and mm. I just I absolutely loved it so far. Very Good. much on board. Good. Yeah, me How about too. You, Alex? No, no, no. I really enjoyed it. I thought I think it was a very well. Like I enjoyed the kind of heavyweight conversations but i think it was as chris said it is visually very like it just to look at it it was amazing those those locations the shots and everything so it kind of um it was well balanced between the kind of the look of it the aesthetics of it and then the kind of like Mm. the kind of more interesting subjects and stuff and yeah like you know they made very little out of they made a lot out of very little you know there isn't very Mm. much actual showing of things but there is a lot of discussion and it didn't feel um, lacking you didn't think oh yeah but you know you've never seen that or well you never they never show you that bit I think it it felt like a really well put together world and, and uh, uh, the idea yeah. I think was really you know and especially nowadays like I say there's a lot of stuff in this that back then they'd have just been oh imagine if that happens but nowadays it's like well yeah that that is what <laughs> that's what it's like <laughs> so it's kind of interesting watching it yeah post uh, all these the internet and all these things that we deal with all the time so yeah well, I guess right. we'll see what happens in part two. Uh, yeah. We're not going to go to the future or the past because we're watching this part two of this. There isn't a trailer for it. Uh, yeah. But you can contact us, uh, sciencefictionmatingsystem at gmail.com if you have any suggestions, as Colin suggested this. Uh, or the website, sciencefictionmatingsystem.com is the website. Or sci-fi rating, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And where was the list is on where now, Sam? Uh, letterboxed. It's still on the website as well. It's still there. Uh, on the website at list but also letterboxd which is letterbox letter b-o-x-d dot com okay. um, it's like goodreads for films basically cool uh, and just to uh, I mean I guess we haven't got a flash to the, for- to the future but coming no, up no we don't need to no. well no but coming up we've got a re-ranking coming up because it's my birthday which would then complete the set of three films to be re-ranked so we'll maybe talk about that next episode. Yeah, next episode we'll say what that uh, is. Yeah. And also we've got our 100th episode coming up, which we've got some yeah. ideas about, so stay tuned. Yeah. Uh, but until then, uh, goodbye from Sam. Goodbye. I mean, uh, guten Morgen. No, uh, Alice Clark. No, hang on. Uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen from him. And Auf Wiedersehen from Chris. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> and uh, Auf Wiedersehen from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Tschüss. Tschüss. <laughs>